Good evening and welcome to this Thursday edition of Feedback. It's our first of two TV5 News Anchor Free-for-Alls. I'll introduce the players coming up. Feedback starts now. Uh, this Thursday edition, our uh, what is the second to last show before uh, the end of the season, and tonight we're doing what we we try to do at the end of uh, every academic semester at uh, Clarion University is bring in our news anchors for what we call our free for all. It's kind of modeled after what you see um, on Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher. So we're going to be doing this this Thursday night as well as next Thursday night. So on tonight's free for all, we have uh, since we have three nights of news, we have one anchor from each night. So from Thursday night, we have Susan Honorad from Tuesday night, Courtney Maines, and from Wednesday night, Jackie Nealon. So we're going to be talking to them. Uh, that is uh, coming up. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we're going to get into the conversation about the news of the day, the news of the semester. It's all coming up on Feedback. Stay with us. of the programming was made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555. Woodjo for some TV5 news anchors, provided by Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all, with many different styles. Fashion Bug also offers a wide selection of accessories. Fashion Bug is located in the Clarion Mall, just off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 5. This portion of the program is made possible through a grant from Clarion Hospital. Clarion Hospital is located off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Clarion Hospital offers outpatient services, transitional care, as well as an emergency room open around the clock every day of the year. More than 400 employees and 80 physicians work to serve the community. Call the Clarion Hospital at 226-9500. Clarion Hospital, providing health care to Clarion County and surrounding communities since 1954. Do you want complete coverage of local, state, national, and international news as it happens? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TV5 News Live. Tune in to Clarion's very own TV5 News Live for complete coverage of the Clarion area and all world. TV5 News crews join with crews from the world's news leader, CNN, to provide complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capabilities, TV5 News can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings for Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. Welcome back to Feedback. It is free for all night, and as I said, let me reintroduce the panel. Uh, TV5 News anchors, one from each night of the week, Susan Onrad from Thursday nights, Courtney Maines from Tuesday, and Jack Nealon from Wednesday. Uh, thank you for being here, ladies. Uh, let's start with, you know, this has been a, a, a momentous uh, last couple of months with everything that happened on September 11th, and we obviously here covered it. You know, we were covering it from, from you know, 11 o'clock that day. 
Uh, how do you think overall the media has done, though, in, in the grand scope of things, not just, you know, local media, but national media and how they have, have played the story? I, th I thought they did really well. You know, like, whenever information is coming in so fast like that, they tried to get the most accurate information they could in the quickest time. And, I mean, whenever the plane crashed in Somerset, at first it was, what, 420 were killed until the actual number, but everyone came on and... It, apologize but when you're working so short I think they did a good job getting it so accurate you not in such a short time right right you know yeah they were like they were all on time and that everything was done perfectly and like even if they weren't like dressed appropriately or anything all the news anchors they were all there and doing everything that they could to get the stories out to everyone that needed to hear the them. first hour I anchored in <laughs> shorts and a t-shirt here <laughs> <laughs> you see those people standing outside with the rubble coming at them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what does that make you think? Uh, were you going to say something, Courtney? Or? Um, I, was just saying, I think they did a great job of, like she said, keeping people updated because there's a lot of scared people out there that have no clue what's going on, and I think mm -hmm. the media's done a really good job of being responsible, keeping them updated. Well, that's a good point. Where, where's the line? Where is the line there when, when in, in that situation, in September 11th, there, was, there wasn't good news? Mm -hmm. There was no saving grace that day, it, it seemed. You know, in the, in the days after we're starting to, you know, the months after we hear these, these stories of, uh, of hope and things that happen, but how, you know, as people who are, you know, aspiring to be in the media, how, how difficult do you think it is to balance something like that when you're giving such bad news, mm -hmm. but it's what's going on? I think it's their responsibility. Like, it's the press's responsibility, good or bad, you have to get it out. Right. And you mentioned be standing there and the rubble coming down. What, can you imagine? I mean, this is, we may end up doing this. <laughs> Journalists love their jobs. I mean, they would do anything for the story. And, uh, the attitude. Yeah. Yeah, if I remember correctly, there was even, like, anchors that were crying mm -hmm. as they were, like, telling everybody what was going on. And that's a good point. That's another thing. I mean, this, uh, September 11th brought so many questions about where the line is. Where is the line on that? Dan Rather cried on uh, David Letterman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where's the line? Should he be crying, and now is he part of the story, or is it just this happened, and what can we do? Well, I think when he came on David Letterman, you know, David Letterman's America's, you know, that's our comedy, that's our time to relax. Right. You know, we're not in the hustle-bustle world whenever we watch that. And for him to go on and, you know, he couldn't go right back into things. It's just like every, the country was mourning, you know what I mean? So for him to come on and try to do a funny show, people weren't going to find it funny. Mm -hmm. I think with him going on and being so emotional, you know, it made everybody realize, like, you have to ease into this. You can't, you can't jump right back into, you know, everyday life. Like, we'll never be the same. Right. Should he be the story, though? I mean, it's, I, watching Larry King, they have Barbara Walters on all the time. They bring in Bob Woodward from the Washington Post. They're bringing journalists in all the time. And these journalists aren't coming in to report the story. They're coming mm -hmm. in to say, well, this is, you know, uh, this is what we did in our news operation, and, and this is what I think. Should a journalist be doing that? Is, is that crossing the line if, in, in, in giving their thoughts? I think the, the journalists, like the ones that sneak over in Afghanistan undercover, they're not doing it for fame. They're famous already, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're doing it because they love it, and I mean, it's a high for them to go over and right. you know get the first, get it, get it first. And I don't think they're doing it for anything but you know the sake of news. Love of the job. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, anything else about the media? We'll move on. Yep. Okay. Travel. You guys scared to travel at all post September 11th? Courtney, you just said you were in New York. Did yeah. you fly or? No, I okay. drove. I drove New York. What are you afraid to travel? I'm a little, I'm a little eerie on it as far as flying. You know, I mean, I know pretty much everything is presumed over and done with, but you know, you can't help but be a little bit worried. When I was in New York, I was a little bit, you know, I was being extra careful, looking, you know, looking at people. I don't know, just being extra careful about things. Mm -hmm. Would you fly? I just rode on my first airplane in August and. I was really scared even then going up in the plane like really high like because you're 40,000 feet in the air but now I don't know if I'll ever even ride a plane again there was just a plane crash this past weekend in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. right where I lived so right 
I'm fly. a big flyer, fly yeah. at least two times a year, but uh, my parents just came back from a cruise. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asking them, is anything different? Mom said there was not very much. I mean, maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. checking bags, but pretty much everything's the same. You willing to wait at the airport now? Well, yeah. she said they had to be there two hours early, and mm -hmm. they they were in and out. Like they were checked mm -hmm. in in 15 minutes. So. But are you uh, are you willing to do that? Is that okay if you're oh, going to sit yeah, there for an yeah, hour? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you know, they made that new pass that law and legislation where the go the jobs are what like going to be federal be jobs, federal. which is mm -hmm. good because you know if those people are getting paid minimum wage to stand there and check our bags, why should they care? They don't have any benefits. Their jobs just a, just a job. Mm -hmm. You know they sh they should that job should mean something to them. And how about the, uh, a couple Mondays ago, when we hear that another plane goes down in New York, you know, what, what, maybe what was your first reaction when you heard that? And my first reaction was, I was on a bus riding back from Scranton to, to Pittsburgh, and I heard about it through the CB on the bus driver's radio, and immediately I'm on the cell phone, is this terror, you know, t finding out from people who are near television or whatever, is this terrorism? Because mm -hmm. that's the first thing that goes through my mind. Mm -hmm. Are we, you know, w w was that your first thought? And are we on edge more now? And is it a good thing that we're on edge? Yeah, I think we're definitely on edge a lot more. And it's a good thing because we're being more cautious, but we're letting every little thing, you know, get to us. And we're panicking about not little things, but we're panicking about everything now and trying mm -hmm. to associate it with terrorism in some way. Speaking of panicking, is the White House panicking in that we can't go on the Christmas tour of the White House? You know, they always make the big deal. You can come in and see the Christmas lights. and. And uh, George Bush, George W. Bush has come out and saying, you've got to go on living your lives. Live mm -hmm. your lives as normal. But we're not going to let you come in and look at our Christmas decorations. Is this overreacting? I don't think so. I think that we were a little bit too laid back in that we, in, we didn't think anything could happen to us as a country. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so we were a little, we, they caught us off guard pretty much. And, uh, we should, I think what he means, go on, live your life, is keep spending money, keep flying, keep our economy going, don't put us in a recession, don't, don't mm -hmm. be afraid, you know, but right. I think that we can't be too cautious. Right. Mm -hmm. Touring the White House, what do you guys think? I don't think it should be, I don't think they should have it this year. I mean, like she said, you have to go on living your life and you have to go on doing your daily activities, but you have to draw a limit somewhere. Right. You can't be too open. You mad you can't go and see the Christmas lights, Susan? <laughs> of course, you know, I always want to see them every year. <laughs> I mean, does it, do, is, is, do you think it's acceptable? I mean, they, these guys say, it's okay. I mean, this is, we live in different times now. You agree? Yeah. Okay. I do. Well, since 9-11, the world has certainly changed. Um, and I don't think, I think that, uh, especially for our generation, it's really going to change things. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break right now. When we come back, though, I want to talk about another subject that was in the news this past weekend. Cloning. Could there be... Another me. Oh <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back. Feedback continues after the break. September 11, 2001 tragedy was not only the tragedy of one nation, it was a tragedy for the entire human race. And if the perpetrators were uh, Arabs or Muslims, um, we should not blame this on Islam or the entire Islamic uh, faith. We should try to avoid these uh, epithets uh, because they have got serious consequences for uh, innocent people. 
uh, it is very necessary uh, for us to uh, de detach the individual acts from their faith and from their ethnicity. You'd never know it on the battlefield. But nearly half of today's military are National Guard and reservists. However, they can't answer our nation's call without their employer's support. If you're an employer, visit ESGR.org and find out how to do your part. After all, their response depends on yours. Welcome back to Feedback this Thursday evening. It is uh, TV5 News anchor free for all night. We have uh, Susan Honorad, Courtney Maines, and Jackie Nealon here. Uh, we were, we've been talking September 11th, but we want to go on. I'm going to talk about something that happened this weekend. Uh, so these guys play anchors always. I'm going to play anchor here for a minute, an intro uh, story from um, CNN. Uh, this weekend in Massachusetts, a research company announced the cloning of a human embryo. Now already, the British House of Commons, uh, the British House of Lords, debated rush legislation to ban cloning of embryos for implementation into the womb, while allowing therapeutic cloning for research purposes to continue. Margaret Lowry has more on the story. Or we might not have that. Uh, there it is. Britain's new legislation came after its high court ruled earlier this month that contrary to what the government believed, existing British law does not prohibit cloning embryos for reproductive purposes. British genetic experts say the U.S. announcement raises significant ethical questions. Over 170 nations of the world have no legislation whatsoever preventing the birth of human clones. Today's announcement draws that step ever closer. We need global agreement and we need it urgently or we will see clones born in many countries of the world. The news from the U.S. makes European legislators uneasy, according to the coordinator of the European Parliament's Temporary Committee on Human Genetics. It will not be accepted in Europe. I think in the whole of Europe it will not be accepted that uh, a person's uh, uh, embryos are created by cloning for other purposes than for uh, research for health care of the people, not uh, for life or such. At least in theory, Europe has banned human cloning for reproductive purposes under the EU Charter on Fundamental Rights. But translating this into national laws may be difficult. As Britain rushes to close its loophole, Europe remains a legal crazy quilt, with each of the EU's 15 states taking their own approach. France and Italy are still debating cloning for therapeutic research. Italy is home to flamboyant fertility doctor Severino Antinori, who claims he will soon be able to clone embryos for implantation in the womb, but says he would have to leave Italy in order to do so. Belgium does not regulate therapeutic cloning. Local ethics committees control individual projects. Germany and Spain explicitly ban human cloning for any reason. The only thing we can do on European level is that we define uh, which uh, research we will uh, finance on European level and we did make a decision uh, to, uh, in the last two weeks where we did say it can be um, financed uh, in uh, cases where it is the, the ethical committees will allow that and uh, only where it is not prohibited. And that is what she wants the EU uh, to adopt a common approach to cloning for therapeutic ends, but given the different traditions and cultures of the European nations, she believes this is likely to be a long way off. Margaret Lowry, CNN, London. So could it happen? You know, obviously it looks like it could happen. I mean, this company came out this weekend and said we can uh, make the embryo. Do we want this to happen? I mean, from the, what I understand, they can uh, obviously not poof, there's another Jackie who is, who is Jackie at this age, but poof, there's another baby Jackie who's going to grow up and, and look exactly like you and have 
I guess, the same characteristics. What do we think? Is this uh, somewhere where you want to go? Look, my mom always wished me, like, ten Jackies. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. No, I, uh, I honestly think that, you know, the day that cloning becomes, you know, a way of life, the world is possibly coming to an end. But no way should it be like that. That's, you know, I understand that people come with diseases. Let's work on ways to cure the diseases, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm a believer that, you know, well, Adam and Eve right. and whenever God says it's your time, I just think that it's your time, you know, I don't. Right. Well, that's one of the issues. They're saying, though, that uh, I'm dying because of, uh, well, let's say I'm not dying. Let's say I'm in an accident and I lose a leg. What if there's, there, there's other, not necessarily maybe we haven't grown this person to the fullest potential that I will have a leg, but there, maybe there's some way that I can get my leg back. But everything happens for a purpose. Like, I mean, may, maybe sometimes it's not, you know, you don't think that's what, mm -hmm. it, you know, something happens for a purpose all the time. Or at least that's how I feel. I don't know how you guys what feel. What do you guys think? I think they, they're trying to say it's going to be for medical reasons, for like um, people who need organs, kidneys. But you have to draw this line somewhere. And right now they say that's what it's going to be for. But who's to say, like, down the road, it's not going to get um, like misused and just because there are some people that just should not be cloned. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people that you don't need to do yes. like more. Hey, no. <laughs> Susan? I just, I'm just completely against cloning. And I mean, because there's only, you only have one life and you shouldn't have to like remake yourself or, you know, like just get cloned and be another person. But what if the same person. They're, they're selling it as this is health. This is health uh, beneficial to, could be beneficial to your health. There's not necessarily I don't think that they're proposing at this point that there's going to be another mm -hmm. me walking, you know, that I could mm -hmm. I could be here and I could be over there. I mean, <laughs> I don't think that that's what they're proposing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm dying from something. We, we were coming up with things right now to save people's lives. Isn't this just another way? Now, I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm just playing devil's yeah. advocate for fun. Well, you know, the people smoke cigarettes, they get lung cancer. We try to look for the quick fix for everything. Um, if I'm overweight, I want to take a pill and just mm -hmm. become not overweight. Like, take vitamins, take care of yourself. But to, re to clone and, mm -mm, that's not natural. That's not how it's meant to be. I don't know. I just well, President Bush really against I, it. Through a spokesman over the weekend, he said, I am 100% against this, against mm -hmm. cloning. Well, I mean, the, look, here's what they're doing in Europe. They're saying we're not going to, we're, we're either not going to fund any research like this or we're just going to say you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do that in America? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on to that. I want to, you know, I don't want to harp on 9-11, but I do want to go back to something. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Courtney is, is in the reserves. Yes. And what is your perspective on, on how this, how things have changed in that, you know, what has your role been thus far and how are you on a, a heightened state of, of always saying what's going on over there, mm -hmm. could I go there, you know, what, how are you, what are you taking away from this? Um, obviously it's really, it's scary. Like I'm, I'm always, like I'm watching the news all the time seeing if they send in more ground troops and especially I saw they're sending in like hundreds of Marines over to foreign countries. So it's, it's really scary because if I get called over, I would get pulled out of school and, you know, just the whole situation is scary. I have friends who have been pulled out of school and sent either to bases in the United States or bases overseas, and they have no clue, like, when they're coming home. They could be there for, like, months, up to two years, and when they come back, they're just going to have to restart their life all over again. So it's, it's really scary, like, the whole, the whole idea of war and how it can affect my life is definitely and at first when it first came out like every time the phone rang I was a little nervous because we we're on like heightened security of course mm -hmm. but now I think it's starting to die not die down a little bit but um, I'm a little bit calmer now than I was at first so. well, there's a lot of people I'm sure around the country who are you know mm -hmm. the same boat as you and I mean I think all of America's on some form of alert and it's all another way we seem to be on alert is uh, Maybe we're holding our pocketbooks a little tighter than we did at one time. 
shopping. Are you guys, uh, do you feel you're going to be doing more holiday shopping this year? Nothing holds me back from it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know. I was shopping. I did the whole Black Friday thing, and there were still a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. And like President Bush said, you need to get out there. You need to shop. You need to help the economy out. Just don't come to the White House and see the Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so you're not scared at all? I mean, you're not, you're not worried about keeping the money tight? Well, it depends on if I had enough money to begin oh, with. Oh, well, okay, that's <laughs> a good point. But they are saying that, um, that I guess shopping was down on Black Friday a, a good bit, or not a good bit, but a bit, but online sales look to be going up this year. So, actually, they just told me Black Friday was up. I thought it was, there, there, I think I was spe uh, spending may have been down, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually out of, about out of time. But thank you guys for joining us. We're going to let Susan uh, head off during the break here because the news is coming up just a few minutes. She's going to join Pat Grace over at the uh, anchor desk. But ladies, thank you for coming down. This was a lot thank of fun. You. Thanks for having us. It was a good time. Stay with us. Uh, we'll be back to say goodbye in just a minute. Just getting going. On September 11th, America faced terrorist attacks of the worst kind. Innocent lives were lost, and a sad cloud was cast over this great nation. These acts were intended to cause fear among all Americans, including our children. But we cannot let that happen. There are things we can do to help our kids. Talk with them, listen to them, tell them they're safe and that they're loved. God bless you and God bless America. Cellular One has plans that fit the way you talk. For all the who's, when's, why's, and where's, there's a plan for you to make someone's holiday happy, happier, or the happiest of all with one of these great phones. Plus, get a free line of phone service, unlimited nights and weekends, free long distance, and free voice-activated dial. However you talk, cellular plans that fit the way you talk. Whether you're looking for seasonal flowers, wedding flowers, or plants, Wilshire's Flowers and Gifts has them all. Plus, a vast array of gifts, ranging from dolls, balloons, fruit baskets, and plush toys. Stop by Wilshire's Flowers and Gifts, located on Merck Street in Clarion. Wilshire's offers same-day delivery. Phone number 226-7070 or 1-800-833-3571. The phone answers 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Feedback. That's it for us tonight. Uh, I want to say, coming up next Thursday night, we are doing another TV5 News Anchor Free For All. Uh, joining us that night will be Pat Grace, uh, uh, Carrie LaPou, and Kelly Esno, uh, or these guys' co-anchors who were just up here. Um, also, another programming note, next Tuesday is Borough Council. So because of that, Sports Night will actually be on in our, in our normal time slot on uh, Wednesday at 7.30, and then we'll be back here with you for feedback next week at 7.30, uh, next Thursday at 7.30. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week. <laughs>